I think we've been hit by a meteorite. Other than that, I have no idea what's going on, but welcome back to another episode of Truly Bad Rock Season 1, everyone. It is episode 25 today, and I don't know what's up with this. I, I think I think this is probably Zloy's doing. I say that every time something bad happens, uh, but this is probably legitimately Zloy's doing. It's just a giant wall of coal. I did ask him for some coal, and he said he would drop it off in a chest. Uh, he clearly lied. I think he was trying to box in my house, but then he got bored and left. <laughs> uh, he didn't want any payment, but I guess, you know, instead he wants my time, and time is money after all. So, geez, I'm going to be mining this out for the next half hour. Thank you, Zoid. Geez, how ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, today's episode is going to be a little bit different from the ones that we typically have on the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be getting ourselves some blocks that we should not have access to in this game such as bedrock and a whole bunch of other different weird blocks as well. Things that could be considered slightly cheaty, but I would like to acquire them. First of all, because they are very, very cool. And second of all, because they will probably be removed from the game someday. And I would like to, you know, get them while we can. So today's episode is going to be a little bit more technical. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with bugs and glitches to get some amazing blocks for some cool little projects. Well, that's pretty nice. We got some cool blocks in the form of blocks of coal. Definitely going to put these to use for some cool projects. Uh, if you're not interested in more technical things, do watch through the episode, even though it's going to be more of a technical one today, because it's going to be fun. We're going to get up to a lot of different shenanigans, and uh, I kind of just want to document getting all these different weird blocks in this game, because this is a weird game, okay? Bedrock Edition has some weird bugs. Ain't nobody in the world can deny that, okay? So I would like to document that and also just get some awesome things in the process. So it's going to turn out to be a rather fun, but also technical episode at the same time. Going to be getting into some rather advanced things, and I'm looking forward to it. I've been planning this episode for quite a while. Those of you who are very, I believe, acute is the word, may have, uh, you know, may have figured out why we need all the gas tiers. We're going to be using these for end crystals, but we're not going to be using them to resummon the dragon or anything like that, because dragons are, they're, they're stupid on this platform. We're going to be using them to actually acquire bedrock in pure vanilla survival. So one more random thing before we really get into the technicalness. Thank you all so much for 70,000 subscribers. That's crazy to see on the channel. And yeah, that's just like incredible. Thank you so much. That's really amazing. We are like slowly, not even that slowly, but surely getting our way towards 100k which is also crazy. I don't even have the words to describe, but thank you all so much. And also, I just launched a second channel, Silent 2. That's where I'll be posting like the live stream replays, updates to farms and stuff. There's actually quite a few videos over on that channel already. Link to it is everywhere that you would expect it to be, uh, but definitely go subscribe to that thing if you want to see additional content from the channel. Uh, slightly less edited in quality, however, it is additional stuff that you may be interested in. So again, go subscribe to that. If you're lucky and early, you might be one of the first like 5,000 or so. Currently, it's at 2,000. And it's growing fast. Thank you all so much for the support on that channel as well. So we need to pick up a couple of things from the shopping district before we can actually head out to the end and start farming ourselves some bedrock. I did check our two uh, shops and we don't currently have any profits. So I desperately need to actually advertise the raid shop. I kind of thought that would rake in a few more profits, but apparently, apparently not. Anyway, there is also a kind of like secondary shopping district back behind the main one. This is the Diamond Alliance. They just like completely split off and made their own thing because they be like that. Uh, so up here is the actual main shopping district, of course, that you've seen. I don't think I've showed this on camera before yet. Uh, but there's basically like three shops down here. We are interested in this one over here from Zap, which is actually like brand new. He's got a blaze in here and we need the blaze rods. And I believe, yes, there is an ATM. Great. These are one diamond apiece because everything's diamonds over here. I don't know why they want the shiny blue rocks. Apparently, they think they have value. But as we know, being a pebble connoisseur, uh, the, 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 the diamonds don't really have any value. What can I say? I haven't been down here in a while. And it's really striking me just how much this place really needs a little bit of TLC. I mean... Yeah, it's it's kind of rough, but I guess we don't care about that. As long as the portal works, it's fine. Uh, maybe that'll be a good future project to actually decorate that little bit of a, you know, stronghold. 
Anyway, here is the actual end, and I do not have a fond memories of this place in the slightest. I believe the last time I was here, there was an immortal invisible wither, and then the time before that, I was getting killed 25 times by double ender dragons. And fun times, fun times. And totally, I, I love this place, it's great. Uh, but today, we're not gonna die. Fingers crossed, we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff with uh, end crystals, so you never know what's gonna happen with those. They are very, very explosive. Uh, but I do need to get myself a couple dozen more Eyes of Ender. And for those, of course, I need Ender Pearls. And in order to get those, I gotta grind through the end. So give me a little bit of time, and then I'll have to mine out some area around that end portal. And then I'll actually explain how we're gonna be farming the bedrock. And there's actually quite a few game mechanics that go into this. So this is probably the most end crystals I've ever made at one time. I'm not gonna make the full, like, stack that we could make out of our 64 gas tiers. Because we actually only need 20 for this bedrock farm to function. And now what we need to do is we need to place down all of these uh, right inside of this very small area. Hence why I have double totems going right now. I should probably get on the chest plate, but honestly, if these all go off, I'm probably going to get flung a couple hundred blocks. And I'll need my elytra to fly back to the island. Uh, so yeah, let's hope that we don't die. But basically, what you need to know is that uh, the, the end crystals aren't going to re-summon the dragon unless you place them on these four corner spots right here. I don't trust having those on the hotbar right now. Oh, hi, Zap. Hi there. <laughs> uh, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm, I'm, this is claimed territory at the moment. Uh, so yeah, basically what we need to do is we need to actually break uh, these portals. Just like that. Very simple, very easy. A lot of people overcomplicate this, but it's actually extremely simple to break these little portals. You just gotta place a water bucket in there, and then that's pretty much it. So, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, you can also place a block right there to get rid of these ones as well. So there's a couple things that you need to know about these in like portal fountain things and also about end crystals as well. Basically, as soon as we remove each and every single one of these actual portals, that is going to force this fountain to actually regenerate. That way, you know, in case something weird happens, all of these uh, get destroyed, the portal will just regenerate. That's fine. You'll be able to get out of the end. And the second thing that you need to know besides that regeneration that happens is that the end crystals will always and forever have fire below them as long as there is a block for that fire to be on. And that fire will actually replace any block in the game. So for instance, as soon as these little portal tiles regenerate, they're going to be instantly deleted by the actual fire of the end crystals. So by having all of these actual portal tiles being deleted as soon as they generate, that's going to force this actual fountain to keep on regenerating and recreating itself about every five or so seconds. And that is going to cause a lot of things to happen and also allow us to farm the bedrock. So what I need to do is I need to place down as many of these crystals as I can. Uh, I think I'll leave it with those two right there. And then as soon as I go ahead and I place in this water bucket, uh, that's going to get destroyed and this entire thing is going to regenerate. And there we go. As you can see, it has regenerated. Uh, these blocks got deleted. These portals came back. All of the other ones are constantly being deleted uh, because, you know, the fire from the end crystals. It's not regenerating yet because we don't have these three actual portals in place. So right now, 19 out of 20 of these things are in place. So I need to go ahead and uh, basically place in that water bucket, pick it up, and then put down that crystal and boom, this thing is going to be constantly regenerating. And we can see that because the torches will actually be popping off. So already this thing is basically a torch farm. And no, I do not want to be near this thing when fighting an Enderman. That sounds like a very, very bad nuclear idea right there. I uh, don't even know why you're bothering at fighting me. Like, for reals, just go away, just go away. Anyway, so yeah, this thing is already a torch farm. If I hold some torches in my... Uh, hot bar, you can see these things are just going to be constantly popping off, flying everywhere, being a whole big giant pain, and uh, I think they're all just going into fire, so whatever, that's a thing. We're not worried about the torches. Torches are super easy, as Lloyd just gave me all the coal in the world. So the first thing that we're going to do for the actual farm itself is get a little bit of a snow golem on the diagonal corner right here. We're going to be farming this piece of bedrock right here as it regenerates, and to do that, we want a snow golem in place. These guys are actually pretty similar to end crystals in that they will always try and put a piece of snow underneath them. 
by having this guy on the slab. As soon as that bedrock gets removed, he's gonna place a snow layer right there. We'll be able to mine that snow and mine the bedrock as it regenerates, which is fairly simple. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm not sure why I'm able to place a pain right there. Apparently his hitbox is just that small and I wish I had some shears. That would make this just the much funnier. So you might think that breaking bedrock is actually like super complicated, but this is bedrock edition. Like it, it's just in the name and it's actually like super, super simple. Uh, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a snow golem over here and this is going to be producing, of course, a bunch of snow layers but for an entirely different purpose of this farm, uh, not actually for the breaking of bedrock, but instead for, or sorry, not for the gathering of bedrock, but for the breaking of bedrock. That one's for getting bedrock, this one's for breaking it. And yes, you need to do both of those in a bedrock farm because of course you do. And yeah, so this guy is basically going to be putting snow layers on this block right here. And then as soon as we flick that lever, that is going to actually break that. That's fine, that's uh, fixable go ahead and remove that there we go now it's going to do its job so that is going to put snow layers onto this button right here that button is on top of a piston face and that is actually going to uh basically stack all the snow layers as you can see they're not actually piling up like they normally would but they're all still stored there so right now it's probably like 20 or so snow layers as you can see this is very laggy very glad this part is automated but as soon as we actually press this button, it's gonna fire upwards uh, and put a snow block in each one of these three places. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Otherwise that would get deleted. And then we're gonna press that. And then yeah, as you can see, all of that just got turned into snow. And that is actually the entirety of the farm done. It's not a fully AFK design. However, it's semi-automatic and it's renewable as well. And you can get as much bedrock as you like with it. So now we need to actually just use the farm. So the last thing that you need to know about this is that you need to mine the bedrock with Silk Touch because reasons and chaos. Uh, so as soon as we press this button, we need to turn to the side and start mining the snow layers that this snow golem is going to be putting down, of course. And that's going to allow us to more or less mine the bedrock and have it plop off as an item when we actually uh, or when it regenerates. So we need to go ahead and press that. Also, I took all the stuff out of my inventory because uh, I, I'm expecting nuclear bombs to go off right now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all over there. And a shulker. I'm very nervous for this. I haven't tried any of this in survival, but go ahead and press the button. Mine that, mine that. There we go. We got a bedrock item. Literally first try. So easy. Look at that. <laughs> we got our first ever piece of bedrock. Pure vanilla survival on the truly bedrock realm. That is amazing. That's so cool. So simple. So straightforward. I don't know how much of the stuff I want to get, but... Realistically, I only need about half a stack. This stuff is actually surprisingly useful if you are a uh, technical Minecrafter or a technical player. Definitely more advanced technologies, even though it's super simple to do, but it's super cool. Look at that, amazing. I don't know what's happening over there still. That something just moved and I don't trust it. However, that's really awesome. So of course I didn't just straight up discover all of these mechanics on my own or anything. There's a lot of different people that have been working on this kind of tech for quite a while and that is kind of cool. So a lot of it isn't actually on YouTube. A lot of it is actually on a Chinese website called Billy Billy and a lot of that I do not understand. I've like never really used the website or anything because I don't understand any of it. However, there is a lot of cool Minecraft tech over there and there's honestly just a massive uh, Chinese like technical community which I've never really been a part of. Didn't really know it was a whole thing but it is a whole massive thing and I've been talking to a lot of those guys in the Tech Rock Discord which is basically just like a technical Minecraft Discord for the Bedrock Edition and there's a lot of cool people in there. Lots of cool stuff. I'll have a link to it down below if you want to check it out. However, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys have been showing me how to do some stuff. People like Jax and Panda4994, Kenneth Do, Dr. Jan Cyan, just a lot of different people in general have been working on this kind of tech. Now, none of them really explained how any of it freaking worked, so I did figure out a lot of the mechanics uh, just on my own, just from like testing around and figuring stuff out. So I haven't seen any farms like this using snow golems or anything. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it does work quite well and I'm quite happy with it. I think it turned out very well. Again, there will be a link to that Discord down below if you want to go check it out. There's a lot of very strange technical things in there. 
And by strange, I mean awesome. So over the last little while, I have released, of course, 98 Bedrock Edition tutorials, but in those 98 tutorials, I've never released a farm for farming Bedrock itself. So let me know in the poll and also in the iCards, or sorry, in the poll and in the comment section down below if you guys do want to see a tutorial for some form of Bedrock farm. I have some ideas for how to improve this, mostly fully AFK bedrock breaking. That's the one thing that I really need to figure out. I don't know how to do that, but I think I can probably figure it out. And yeah, if you guys want to see a tutorial for this, let me know, comment down below, because honestly, it, it's kind of fun. And I'm going to really try to not accidentally place one of these. <laughs> I know it's just me, but I was really expecting and I'm very disappointed that the bedrock breaking sound is just like the standard item plop. I really expected it to be like way more heavy duty sounding, but it's just a standard item plop. Like, there's nothing special at all. Like, come on, at least add in the little Easter egg for those of us who are able to actually mine this stuff in survival. It's just like a standard item plop, Psh, super boring. So it's now quite a while later. I've just been messing around while kind of mindlessly doing uh, some bedrock mining. And I have actually got myself exactly one stack of bedrock blocks, which is kind of ridiculous. Again, I'm going to really try and never place these because, you know, clearly it's bedrock, but I think we can actually place them. Uh, because why wouldn't we be able to? You can place all kinds of things in survival. Those should be no exception. But yeah, this thing has been working exceptionally well. I don't think we'll be selling these or anything, although I did think up a really evil plot. I could just put one of these randomly in everyone's bases on the server and then just charge them like 40 pebbles for removal. <laughs> of course, I'd never do that, but the thought in itself is entertaining enough that I thought I would share it with you because why not? And uh, now we kind of need to like get out of the end and uh, this is going to be the fun part. So you got to do this in a very, very precise way. OK, actually being smart about it, I think there might be a way to salvage this because all we need to do is move one of these crystals over and then the tiles will be able to regenerate and then the whole thing won't go kaboom. So I'm not sure if we can actually like move these blocks over here let's place this down and then we have to wait for that to get deleted okay place another one down push that over and then push that over and then are we pushing the crystals over i'm not sure if we actually are or not but i want to try and push them over uh oh we are pushing them over okay good so i think that means that this thing doesn't need to explode yeah look at that okay cool so uh we're not gonna have massive explosion <laughs> Uh, unless I do something stupid right now. Oof, that scared me. I don't trust it at all. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna leave that there. If anyone is crazy enough to attempt to light that thing off, uh, they can totally do that if they want to. I will make it so that there's at least two portals right there. So place that water bucket uh, right there, and then that should regenerate too. Yeah, there we go. So now people can at least get out safely. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up this hole. And other than that, it's just gonna be like 20 end crystals just right there. It's just totally chilling out. Now, I know you guys are disappointed that there's no explosions in this episode, especially that massive, uh, you know, thing of end crystals. However, there is one more type of, uh, you know, tile portal block thingy that I think we can get in today's episode. And that is another portal tile. Now these things are actually active, like tiles that you can place down in the world, they'll act exactly like another portal. Not sure if you can come back through at them, but you can at least go to the nether using them. And there is a special little technique to get this. Very weird, but this has been around for a little while. And basically what we need to do is we need to blow up these tripwire hooks. As you can see, this thing is now here, floating on this block. We can get rid of that string if we want to. Uh, that string didn't actually exist. So now what we need to do is we need to light this nether portal at the same exact moment that we actually mine this thing with a soap touch pickaxe. And that should give us a little bit of a nether portal tile. Again, I kind of just want to collect this because it's going to be kind of fun. And like, why would you not want a nether portal tile? Like for realsies. Now I have tried this out in creative on creative worlds and it hasn't worked. However, uh, Realms lag is known to actually help with this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim at this very specific position right here, hence why I'm not moving the camera. And we're going to start mining and then walk forward 
and oh my god we actually got it look at that a portal it's animated too what <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know that that would actually work, but cool beans. Look how cool that looks. That is awesome. Why is it square? Dude, that's really cool. I think that's way cooler than bedrock. Look at that. That is awesome. I guess we could place it down, but at the same time, I kind of want to get a few more of these. That is so cool looking for real. That is like an awesome looking three dimensional block. I've never seen nether portals on like multiple different sides it's always just like a two-dimensional thing it looks so cool i wish I'm, I'm sure this is probably a thing in modded but i wish we could get these like actually legit in the game that would be so cool look at that amazing it's just super cool so yeah i'm gonna do that a few more times it takes one tnt per actual you know uh, nether portal tile i only got four more of these things we'll see how it goes so that actually worked out fairly well i got four out of five uh the fifth one actually was a failure because i put additional items into the dispenser instead of just flint and steel so overall pretty good method of actually getting them uh the video i saw on this method is from m that is the only english part of their name i'll have a link to it down below it works out pretty well you definitely do need a little bit of lag for it to actually be reliable however i added like zero luck actually getting that to work in a creative testing world it has been a while since we've been over here at this build the squid farm this place still exists it hasn't disappeared off the face of the planet or anything and occasionally i do come over here and use it and we also have a little bit of a rioter over here uh, if you've seen the riots in the shopping district one of them came over here he's like sell your ink and uh we we, we need this for the bank dude this is for the pebbles jeez Anyway, uh, the reason why we are over here is because there is a new tile that you can actually get only in this update. It wasn't possible in 1.11, but it is possible in the current 1.12 update, and that is getting the bubble column tiles. Now, these are very special because they're like water and stuff. I'm not sure if you can actually place them or whatnot but it is a thing that exists. I'm not sure how exactly to get it. I'm gonna need to do a little bit of experimenting. So I didn't have any luck getting the actual bubble column tiles, which is arguably the most easy tile to get in this video. However, I did find another bug. Uh, this bunny was not there like one minute ago and then it just randomly suddenly appeared in that corner. So hello there, bunny. You'll probably end up in the nether one day because you are a stupid bunny. However, I did also make a couple upgrades to our little squid farm, and there's probably a few more upgrades that we should make to it as well. So it turns out that the actual fish in the game spawn anywhere from 12 to 32 blocks away from the player. So as you can see, when we're standing right here, we get a punch of fish, and that is why we have so many fish in our storage system, and why I needed all that coal from Zloy to actually smelt it down. I will have hundreds of thousands of fish for the entire rest of the season. However, if you go further than 32 blocks away from the actual surface of the water, then no fishies will spawn, as you can see there's none spawning, and only the dolphins and turtles and squids will actually be able to spawn, and that is pretty excellent. Of course, nothing is spawning right now, because Prowl's online, taking out the whole map cap, like he does. Blame Prowl, just blame Prowl. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we can also upgrade this thing a little bit further, add some more water to this thing and whatnot. I actually made this tutorial before the new spawning sphere uh, spawning mechanics were actually added to the game, so it didn't even really cross my mind when we were building up this farm. So yeah, there's certainly some upgrades that, that could be done to make the rates of this thing way better for the actual ink. So overall, maybe not a super productive episode for all the different projects that we needed to do. However, I think it was still pretty fun. We got ourselves, you know, a stack of bedrock and some portal tiles as well. Not every day you get these weird and mysterious blocks that you definitely should not have. There are, of course, two more portal tiles and just two more weird blocks like this that I know of in the game at the moment. One of those is the end gateway tile and one of those is also the actual, uh, you know, bubble column tile as well. We won't have time to get those today. However, maybe we'll get those at random points in future episodes. And honestly, I just really like how these look. That's so cool. I love how it's animated. That's, that's by far my favorite block in the game right now. It's just super cool. Anyway, I hope that you all did enjoy today's episode. Let me know if you got any ideas for what we should use the stack of bedrock for, because, like, seriously, it's not every day that you just get to play around with that kind of stuff in survival. I want to use it for some very cool projects 
But if you did enjoy today's episode, be sure to leave a like on the video as it helps out the video and the channel significantly. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe as well so you don't miss a future episodes where we probably get done more stuff than this episode. But I'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one. Thank you again for watching. And then there was silence.